the Philistines are fighting against the Israelis and they capture the ark. The ark is symbolic of the presence of God and wherever the ark was, Israel had victory. But now the ark is taken by the Philistines. Eli the priest hears about this and he falls over backwards and breaks his neck. His daughter-in-law, Phinehas, gives birth to a son and they call his name Ichabod because the glory of the Lord had departed from the camp of Israel. But later on the ark is brought back and in the background is the valley of Surik where the ark is brought down from Beth Shemesh. And we're going to read to you about it in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 6. Now the ark of the Lord was in the country of the Philistines seven months. And the Philistines called for the priests and diviners saying, What shall we do with the ark of the Lord? Tell us how we should send it in its place. So they said, If you send away the ark of God of Israel, do not send it empty, but by all means return it with him with a trespass offering. Then you will be healed, and it will be known to you why his hand is not removed from you. Then they said, What is the trespass offering that we shall return with it? They answered, Five golden tumors, five golden rats, according to the number of the lords of the Philistines, for the same plague was on all of you and on all of your lords. Therefore you shall make it images of your tumors and images of your rats that ravage the land, and you shall give glory to the God of Israel. Perhaps he will lighten his hand from you and from your gods and from your land. Why then do you harden your hearts as the Egyptians when Pharaoh hardened their hearts, when he did mighty things among them, did they not let the people go that they might depart? Now therefore make a new cart, take two milk cows, which have never been yoked, and hitch the cows to the cart, and take their calves home away from them. Then take the ark of the Lord and set it on the cart, and put the articles of gold which are your returning to him with a trespass offering in a chest by its side. Then send it away and let it go. And watch, if it goes up the road to its own territory to Beshemesh, then he has done, he has done us this great evil. But if not, then we shall know that it is not in his hand that struck us. It happened to us by chance. Then the men did so. They took two milk cows and hitched them to the cart and shut up their calves at their home. And they set the ark of the Lord on the cart and the chest with the golden rats and images of their tumors. But the cows headed straight for the road to Beth Shemesh and went along the highway, lowing as they went and did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. And the lords of the Philistines went after them to the border of Beth Shemesh. Now the people of Beth Shemesh were reaping their wheat harvest in the fields. These fields are here behind us. And they lifted up their eyes and saw the ark and rejoiced to see it. Then the cart came into the field of, the jo of Joshua of Beth Shemesh and stood there. A large stone was there. So they split the wood of the cart and offered the cows as a burnt offering to the Lord. The Levites took down the ark of the Lord and the chest that was with it, and in which were the articles of gold, and put them in a large stone. Then the men of Beth Shemesh offered burnt offerings and made sacrifices that very same day. But now let's look at the results. Then he struck the men of Beth Shemesh because they had looked into the ark of the Lord. He struck 50,070 men of the people, and people lamented because the Lord had struck the people with a great slaughter. And the man of Beth Shemesh said, Who is able to stand before this holy God? And to whom shall it go up from us? So they sent messengers to the inhabitants of kirith Jerem, saying, The Philistines have brought back the ark of the Lord. Come down and take it with you. So here in the valley is where the ark was brought back, and now here is Ari to tell us more about this experience in the life of Israel. Yeah, so we are standing on the tell of Beit Shemesh. North is here to the left, the mountains of Tzu.
Chora, the land of Samson. Far behind me, the Philistines area. The five cities of the Philistines. Ekron over there, Gat, Ashdod, Ashkelon, and Gaza. So we are in the place where the Israelites were on the walls of the city. They could see the Ark of Covenant coming so clear in the valley of Sorek. They saw it and they were astonished because seven months it was over there. Who carried it? Two milking cows. Now milking cows wants to go back to their babies. So this was the sign that the Philistines said, if the milking cows will cry, will weep, but will continue on, we know it's from God. And we know that they came to the field, all this yellow field, till today, till today, more than 3,000 years after it happened, is dedicated to, to a granary, like it was in, the, in that time. You see all this yellow, we just ripped the granary three months ago, in June. And you see this, all these elements are in the slopes of Beit Shemesh. All these are digging, archaeological digging that still are done here. Everything like this is actually one big compound of building, of house. And over there we see a hill with big stones. They are till today. Almost the only stones that you can, you can see near the field, which has no stones, totally empty. We can understand that this is the field of Joshua from Beit Shemesh, and the ark arrived until he er stopped in his field. Now, let us see what happened here. First, remember that Beit Shemesh is a Levite city. What is the meaning? The Levites, more than anybody in Israel, should know exactly what is the meaning of the Ark of Covenant. Why they were so, so eager to go and look into, remember, that's what is written, to look into the Ark of Covenant. In other words, to raise the cover of the cherubim and look into. Why? Let us remember that the Ark of Covenant for 369 years 369 years, it was in Shiloh, in the tabernacle there in the most holy, in the Holy of Holiest. The same Ark of Covenant that took the children of Israel out of Egypt, that made through Sinai all the way. They crossed the Jordan River and the Levites took the Ark of Covenant on their shoulders and thus God opened them the Jordan River. And then the ark arrived to Gilgal. And there in Gilgal, the ark stayed another 14 years. During these 14 years, Joshua had all the battles in the south, in the north. And after 14 years, they continuing and walking to Shiloh, which became the capital, right, of, of the, the nation of those days, between, before the split between Judah and Israel. And there in Shiloh, it continued to stay, like I said, 369 years. So imagine all the people knew, knew, knew that the Ark of Covenant, the Ark of Covenant, this is the place that God is present. And look what happens. For the first time, it is just under their home and they have the chance to go to see what is inside that all the world was talking about, right? You can see what is the problem with curiosity, right? What is the problem? Now, do you think that only people of Beit Shemesh will come? Definitely not. I ask you, if you know about a situation like this, you live 100 kilometers or, or, or miles from here, and all your children are coming, Father, mother, let us go. Let, then we have a chance, first in life, to see, to look into the Ark of Covenant. All my friends did it already. All my uncles did it. Let us go. The Bible speaks about 50,070 people that died in this plague. What it means? People came from all around the country to watch into the Ark of Covenant.
Maybe it was a big festival. Maybe they opened McDonald's here. I don't know. Maybe they sell tickets in one dollar. I don't know. But I know one thing, that 50,070 people, that's what the Bible says. And not like a new, some new translations that they change it to 57 people. Why this is so important? Because people didn't die immediately. Imagine they come, they visit, they see the ark, they go back all around to their village, and look what happens. After one week, two weeks, suddenly somebody in your family feels bad. And then another feels bad. And then you have heard that your neighbor's son is feeling very bad. High fever, you don't understand what happened, but just the uncle died yesterday. And then slowly, 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 people are dying all over the country. And only when they check what they find, what was in common to all of them, they were visiting two, three weeks ago the Ark of Covenant. The Bible said it was a big plague, 50,070 people. It was so hard till the people said, impossible. Let us find somebody that can get this Ark of Covenant from here. Impossible to continue this way. But let us remember there were three most important things in the Ark. What they were and why they were there. There was the manna, the little bottle with ma manna. There was the rod, the rod of Aaron. And there was the broken tablets. Now, what are these three things? Why they were inside? God tells Moses, I will give you the manna. Every day go and pick them. But don't pick it on Shabbat. Shabbat is a restful day. I will give you on Friday double portion. What they did? On Shabbat, they went to find the manna to pick it. And look, God's wrath was on them. And he punished them. And he made a plague. And after this told Moses, Moses, take this manna, put it in the Ark of Covenant to, remind, to remind them their stubbornness, their rebellion against me. You see what's the problem? Everything that was inside, the tablets, they are there to remind the rebel against me. That they, when I gave them the word, look what they did. And the, ark, the, the rod of Aaron. You remember when they say to Moses, who said that only by Moses God can talk? Why not by us? And then he told them, put your rods all the night there in the tabernacle. And in the morning, the rod of Aaron beautiful representation of Christ, right? It was all the night in the dark, in the cold. And then in the morning, it was risen. It was blossoming. You see, so these three things, these three elements are signs of the rebellions of Israel. And that's why they had to carry it on their shoulder to remind themselves, we are rebels. We are blamed. We are blamed. We are rebels. Not put them on a cart to take it, like they did later on mistakenly. And that's why it's so important. It was a very hard yoke of rebel. And here we see the disaster that came on these people. Again, rebelling the Word of God, looking into the Ark of Covenant. This is probably why the Bible says rebellion is like witchcraft. And to obey God is better than sacrifices. Amen. Amen.